What's good, everyone? Coach Damien here with the Shift Method Podcast. Hope everyone's having a great day. If you're listening to this, this is coming out on Monday, July 3rd. We're halfway through 2023, man, if you can believe that. Uh, it's flying by quite fast, but we got a lot of awesome things coming y'all's way. Uh, just a couple quick reminders and announcements. Um, again, this is Monday, July 3rd. So if you're listening to this, hopefully you're subscribed to the newsletter because the July newsletter will have gone out. Um, I'm doing this about three weeks in advance. So I won't speak too certainly, but I'm hopeful that we have maybe some new merchandise in the store. I'm hopefully doing a little for the July sale for that weekend leading up to 4th of July to kind of give you all some discounts on programs and merchandise that's available. Uh, those programs, of course, through the Train Heroic app. So if y'all want to check that out, I'll be sure to have that link down in the description below. If you aren't subscribed to the newsletter, why not? Uh, it's free to do so. Basically does highlights of all the content from the previous month, and any new updates in life and what the shift method is doing. So you just head to the shiftmethod.org. It should auto populate um, for you in about a couple of seconds, or you just scroll to the bottom of the first page. You put in your name, you put in your email and the first Monday of every month, you guys get an awesome newsletter going over everything, but that's really all the main updates that I got for y'all. Again, this is episode number 46 and we're going to be chatting with another awesome fitness pro who I had the pleasure of meeting by the time this is coming out about a month or two ago. Uh, and that is a physical therapist in the local Boca Raton area. And that is Austin. Austin, do you mind introducing yourself to the people for me, please? Yeah, sure. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Austin Merrill. I'm from Boca Raton, grew up, born and raised, um, went to school down in Miami and then came back and now I'm living here, loving Boca and everything it has to offer all the health professionals and everything. So I've been practicing here for a couple of years now and had the pleasure of meeting Damien pretty recently at the uh, SoFlo DecaFest. And since then, it's been it's been great. Yes, sir. Local Florida boy, man. I love it. We got a lot of local Florida physical therapists that I have friends with who went to FAU. You went to, was it FIU or UM? FIU. Yep. FIU. Yeah. Got you. Got you. And then did you end up did you end up staying at FIU or did you go to, was it UCF? Where, where did you go after that? Or did you stay down in Miami? Well, I went, I went to UCF for undergrad and then okay. got my doctorate. At FIU, so nice. I, I heard, I heard FIU is a pretty, pretty awesome program, man. I had a couple people I know who went there. Loved it. If I were to do it all over again, I'd go right back. That Everyone is amazing. Was great. Professors were awesome. People were good. Learned a lot of good things too. So all around, it was good. Very nice, man. Very nice. Well, yeah, like I mentioned, we got another physical therapist on the podcast. So we've talked with Morgan Sunderland. We've talked with uh, Keandre. So we've had a lot of, you know, during their time going through school, but then also talking to them as they've gotten out of school. So hearing from Austin is going to be good to kind of for any aspiring physical therapists or people who are just getting into the field, kind of getting a PT's insight, as well as hearing someone who actually like works in a physical therapy clinic right now. So we're going to go through all that important and awesome information. But first, this is the Shift Method Podcast, everyone. You know we got to talk about people's fitness background because we got to know more about our guests here. So, Austin, just kind of like, how did you like personally get into fitness? Like, what is like your fitness origin story? So I grew up playing hockey at the young age of four. Uh, <laughs> I started uh, playing competitively around seven. And then I played all the way through college. I played a club in college at UCF. But, okay. Um, that's how I was exposed to more of the athletic side of fitness. And growing up, I never really took advantage of that. Um, I was never in the gym religiously. Like, like I feel like sports nowadays have kind of taken that evolution and being at the top of your game, you got to put the work in and everything like that. But I didn't really start um, consistently working out and getting into the fitness world until college. Mm. Um, I was always the lean, skinny kid. Uh, everyone was making comments about, wow, you're so skinny. And <laughs> that's, that's kind of what got me motivated uh, when I was in college. And then I'd say my sophomore year, I really put pedal to the metal and was in the gym five, six days a week, um, changed my whole nutrition because nutrition is a key element to hypertrophy and mm -hmm. all the strength gains and everything that comes along with that. So, um, I saw tremendous results 
with being consistent and I just fed off of that. So the wheels were spinning and I was loving it. So that's what got me into it from there. Awesome, man. Yeah. I I'm is the Florida Panthers. Are they, they're in the Stanley cup right now. Correct. Do I have yeah, that right? I was at the game last night. Oh, they, snap. Okay. Yeah, I did not they, catch it. Who, who won? Up. I'm out of loop. Panthers in overtime. They Let's go. Uh, Let's go. Two minutes left. They tied it up. Um, they weren't getting anything going really the whole game after after they scored the first one. But uh, two minutes left, they tucked it in the back and then over. They took a questionable call. I don't know all the rest. <laughs> from getting on the rest, I had side with them because some questionable calls. But um, they killed off that penalty and then shot from the point through traffic went in the back and place erupted and it was electric so let's go man that's awesome time, fun night. florida has been just crushing the athletic side man fau made it to the final four miami's currently in the finals we'll see if what happens because by the time this comes out there'll be a there'll be a new champion for the 23 season so we'll see how that goes mm -hmm. and you know florida panthers in the stanley cup and then of course uh Lionel messi uh, just got acquired to to Miami, which is wild. I, I heard that news a couple of days ago from this coming out. So, Shocking. yeah. So Florida is it already was on the map, but now it's on like the global stage even more so. So really, really good times for for athletics in Florida, man. Um, for sure. That's awesome hearing how you got like, you know, I think a lot of people start that way, right? You know, it starts with a sport for a lot of fitness pros. And then ultimately we mm -hmm. want to. Like you said, the evolution back in the day, it was you just play your sport and that's how most athletes were in shape. But now they realize the power of nutrition, the power of how the weight room can impact them. And then they usually fall in love with it afterwards. And they're like, okay, well, maybe I'm not going to go pro, but now I can take this other passion that I found in fitness and get active that way. Yeah, Awesome. Sure. Man. Awesome. And so now when you were, when you were growing up playing hockey, what position did you play? I was winger. I was more defensive forward, though. So I bounced around sometimes if there was a hole that needed to be filled on defense. Coach would move me back. Um, but my role kind of changed as I grew up. I was more the skilled guy scoring all the goals, younger, um, offensive powerhouse. Then as I started getting a little in the higher competition skill level wise, started becoming more defensive um my shot was more of my best attribute so i'd post up in a high slot that way i can get back on d if need be quicker um never had the best hands <laughs> hands like, but um so i as i got to college and high school um became more defensive minded nice man very very cool and did you do any other sports growing up or was hockey kind of like your, your main love Hockey was the main one, um, uh, but I also played lacrosse. One of my friends got me into it in high school and excelled really well. I, there's a lot of carryover between mm -hmm. hockey and lacrosse. Right? So uh, those those skill, uh, fine motor skills with the hands and everything translated real well for me. So I had some success in lacrosse as well. And Very then nice. my dad growing up, he's a golfer. He okay. My brother and I golf from a nice. young age as well. So. In our off season, I would play golf and then bounce back and forth between those two. Very cool. Yeah. Hockey is one of those. I'm a pretty athletic person, but something about being on ice and me do not go very well. I, I've, you know, we have an ice. I live in Coral Springs. I have an ice rink, like literally a 10 minute drive from where I am. Um, and I would go there all the time as a kid with camp or with family and just like, I was that kid hugging the wall, holding onto the railing or like getting that, you know, embarrassing for me, at least red thing where you have to like hold yourself up, dude, because, man, I cannot I can rollerblade very well, but I can't ice skate for some reason. Yeah, you got to learn early. The earlier you learn, I feel like the better, the quicker you can progress. It's it's definitely tough for sure. But I was at that point, too, one time, so I can sympathize with the the wall huggers hey maybe someday we'll go out to the ring man you can help me out not, not embarrass myself <laughs> there we go. Yeah. very cool very cool and on the topic this is cool because you know, we don't talk about hockey too much i'll be sure to link my podcast with robert who 
uh, shout out to him. He actually just got a job in Tennessee with a uh, hockey. So I'll put that podcast link down below where he talks about some strength and conditioning for hockey players. That was a cool conversation. Now, what is like, are you, what is your current training look like? Are you training for anything specifically? Do you just work out to stay in shape? What do you currently do physical activity wise? Uh, more so now just to stay in shape. Um, I do dabble in CrossFit a little bit. My coworker okay. Bill, um, he's got me into that, that world. So I've been doing that a little more recently. Um, and then just here and there, I work out at Johnny O's, um, awesome gym by the way so that's right johnny is gymnasium baby book tone right after work i'll pop in over there um i've been busier lately so get in maybe a couple times a week but i like to get in start getting in more for sure but yeah uh just stay in shape keep active keep my body healthy moving all that stuff so yeah and it's nice your clinic too you know this is something i really love when i first walked into y'all's clinic is that like it looks kind of like a gym where like you guys have you know a squat rack and you have dumbbells and you have equipment that can be utilized where you know i i joke you know i joke about the fitness industry a lot because i'm in it uh you know physical therapy used to back in the day like even when i would do it when i was in high school it's like you know you're doing banded clamshells for six months straight and it's like where's the progression where's the you know progressive overload where's the compound lifts it's like no no, no he's he's got knee pain he should he shouldn't be doing squats right now six months of banded clamshells yeah. and it's like you guys had a gym and then you incorporate elements obviously of physical therapy because that's y'all's profession but the ultimate goal is to get people back to moving in the gym so i thought that was really really neat when i walked in yeah of course that goes along with our population too it's it's we treat an active population whether it's the high school athlete the college athlete professional athlete or just the weekend warriors looking to get back to doing what they love doing. Um, like you said, not much progression in light banded stuff like the clamshells. They do have its place and its use from time to time, but generally getting people strong is what's going to get them back to sport, back to even something as simple as getting up off the toilet. Absolutely. Um, so Got to do that with weight, with, without that equipment it's it's a little hand tying so yeah, yeah I, I love that have that at our disposal and it's been awesome absolutely now i always like to dive into people's you know why behind things what made you like want to become a physical therapist like why did you get into the profession overall yeah so i feel like the story is lines up with most pts um, but initially it was hockey. I suffered two pretty bad injuries, one broken leg and Oof. then one broken wrist, which I had surgery on. And both of those took me, took me a while to recover rehab. So I had some experience firsthand with, with the physical therapy side of things. And it helped me tremendously getting back to not only playing, but playing at a high level, which is what I was used to and what I needed to get back to. <clears throat> So that's what got me initially into it. And then as I was exposed and started doing my, my hours observation wise, and I was in high school, I had, I was part of the medical academy. We oh, had nice. uh, this class where it was called an externship, where we went to different healthcare uh, providers and settings. And we just got to see what they do for a day. And we would go around to a bunch of different ones and physical therapy stuck out to me. Um, I was on the pre-med sports medicine track and I saw that there wasn't really involvement. Yes, they tell people advice and how they can get better, but they weren't really immersed in the process of doing that. So being more involved in making more of a difference in how someone gets to where they were and what their goal is, is, is what drew me in. Absolutely, man. With, with the broken leg, did you break your femur, your tibia, your, like, what'd you break exactly? Uh, broke my fibula and a partial incomplete of the tibia. It was uh <laughs> mid stride skating up ice and, uh, a big boy fell on me. So my foot was planted and it was uh. like that, that, and I was screaming 
I'm, I would I'm imagine sure the fans on the on the other side of the rink were were hearing me. But um, it was it was at least a year of recovery. Uh, yeah, three man. months in a cast, another three to four months rehabbing it and then even then getting up back on the ice trusting that leg again it took a little bit of time so that is such a big thing man is that trust process right i i talk a lot with like about you know pain science is an interest of mine and so you know obviously there's the physiology side of of pain and injury right You, you tear your acl you break your leg but then there comes a point where it's like you're healed you're cleared you did your therapy you're not having symptoms physically, you're performing well, but there's that a mental block, right? That athletes, oftentimes I think we just think athletes all the time. And this includes me when I would play sport as well. It's like, Hey, you're 100% ready to go. And then like, you have to actually get over that mental hurdle of like, someone is, you you have that fear of someone's going to hit me again, or I'm going to step weird and something's going to happen. And that's, that's a hard thing to overcome sometimes even more so than the physical. Mm-hmm. yeah definitely it, it's an often overlooked thing in our realm too is yeah we're physical therapists but mental goes hand in hand with that too so um it's definitely a, a part of someone's plan of care that you don't want to neglect and you want to be sure they're in the right mindset to 100 percent with, with the plan yeah and that was cool that your high school did you go to to boca high or or i went to go? west boca West Boca. That's cool that they had that program. I've, I've heard like some schools do kind of certain things like that for seniors, but that's really awesome that they had like that extracurricular internship opportunity for y'all. Yeah, it was great. It got me on the track that I wanted to be on without wasting any time. So yeah, I was glad that I, did that. I was very fortunate. I've told the story where, you know, I growing up, I'd wanted to be in the military, but you know, I developed a autoimmune disorder, so I couldn't. And so I had to quickly shift my entire life focus from military prep to finding a career, my getting ready to find a career my senior year of high school. And luckily, my uh, high school had weight training, which I was in. I was in JROTC, which was a very physically fitness active. Um, I had anatomy and physiology, and they just started a brand new sports medicine class, which is basically kinesiology. You went through every single like uh, section of the body joint by joint, muscle by muscle. And we learned all the insertions, the origins and the movements. And I, I fell in love with that. I was like, oh, this is awesome. This is exactly what I want to do. So yeah, it'd be cooler if more more high schools gave like even just small opportunities like that to find out like what career you might be interested in the kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes, sir. Okay, so you initially go to UCF for the sports medicine route, correct? Yes. And then, so then you get accepted into FIU. I always like to ask people this. What was like the, if you could go back in time to, you know, Austin of the past and you could give them like a good piece of advice or two on that process. Cause I know it's a, it's an insane process to apply to PT school. What would you, what piece of advice would you give them? Well, I'd dial it way back to uh, undergrad because uh, <laughs> it's, it's competitive. It's competitive. So make sure you stay on top of your classes in undergrad um it took me two rounds to get in so i applied and i I found that most amongst my colleagues as well talking to them it's it happens where you go straight from undergrad into doctor school but most most of the people in my cohort were yeah i took a year off or it took me two cycles to get in um so i'd say if you want to limit that that gap year, which that gap year was great for me. If I didn't do it intentionally, but if I had seen or known what I know now, I I would have taken it voluntarily. But um, yeah, so it took me two cycles to get in. I was I was going to out of state to the open houses, just getting a feel for different programs, and I found that. A lot of the in-state schools favor their in-state applicants. A lot of the out-of-state schools favor their um, in-state applicants that are local to them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you have a school in mind that you really love, I I, I don't want to say don't apply there, but (laughs) um, 
the in-state schools and especially the ones that do interviews just so you can show off who you are a lot yeah. of them they're now less worried about the numbers more about are they going to be a good clinician how do they carry themselves can they talk to people um so um fiu uh, sorry what was the question again I got no no tangent. You're all good, man. We were just talking about how, you know, advice that you would give yourself for if you were to go back in time and, and give young Austin some advice while applying to PT school. That would be the main thing. And then just pick the brains of people who are in the profession already, get a feel for what what the the career is looking like at the time and what direction it's going. Just get as much knowledge as you can and uh, utilize that to your advantage, I think knowledge yeah. is power so yes it is and it's tough man because like you know i talk to pts and they all say similar things where it's like you know you don't know until you know like no one not really unless you have like a good advisor like you ask them like pointed questions constantly but you know people find out last minute crap i needed to take this orgo class or crap i do need calc 2 for this specific program in state or you know damn i needed this extra volunteer hours to, to beef up my resume. And I'm finding out now one or two semesters before I graduate, it's like, uh, I gotta, I gotta take a step back for a minute. So it's, it's a lot of work. So for all my aspiring PTs out there, you know, Austin, like you said, you know, take the time, do the research, make those connections, talk to your advisors, like ask them because otherwise you're going to be, you know, senior year and you're gonna be like oh crap i have all these things i still have to do and that takes time yeah it's it, it was a lengthy process so i'm glad i only had to do it twice <laughs> I don't know how many more times i've been able to do it but and FAU's, F, F, excuse me, fiu is perfect man it's just far away enough from home but it's not too far away. So you could always go back if you wanted to, right? That, that healthy distance between family, right? <laughs> yeah. Miami's always fun too. So yes, it is that, that in your uh, backyard, but absolutely. Yeah, it was great. I mean, it was a, it was a heavily research university. So I feel like we learned the latest and greatest and um, also it was close to university of Miami. So we got to hang out with their students a lot and, just coerce and it was great. Yeah, man. I had my friend that I mentioned, Morgan Sutherland. She went to UM and then Keandre, my, my other friend who's now a physical therapist, he also went to FIU and they said both were absolutely phenomenal programs. Um, they had the fortunate but unfortunate, right? It's, you know, obviously not to dismiss anything, but it made them have to get creative. They went through partially during COVID. And so there were a lot of ups and downs with that. Did you, did your time overlap with COVID at all? Yeah, I was actually in Key's class. Oh, there we, man, look at that. So, yeah, he's... Look at that small <laughs> world. Do you know Key? Yeah, I know Key. Oh, he's, come on. Now. I got to, I got to hit him up now. See, talk to him about Austin. Let's go. Mm -hmm. He's the man. Yeah, I haven't, talked, I haven't seen him actually since we graduated. So I got to hit him up. Last time we talked, he was in, um, I apologize, Keith, if I get this wrong. It's just I believe he's in Mayo Clinic right now in in Broward. And I think he's doing like outpatient or like inpatient physical therapy in the hospital setting, unless he's he's changed since then. But I'm pretty sure that's what he's up to now. Okay. Yeah, that's man. Good. That is that's awesome. Man, small world, dude. Look at that. Yeah. But uh, so how was that experience for you being in like the 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 COVID era and like learning? Like, how did that impact you? Um, I always loved the face-to-face -face classes the best, so it was tough. I mean, you're sitting at home just on your computer. I, I tend to lose focus a lot if I'm just <laughs> staring on the screen, so there was a couple times where I caught myself daydreaming, thinking, oh, what'd she just say? And then <laughs> have to watch the recording again, so... It was, it was a little tough in that aspect. Um, the hands-on labs, I feel like, luckily we've gotten all the ortho stuff out of the way by then. That's it was good. in our last year where we were really affected by it. So we had gotten what my, my passion is out of the way already. So I already got all the hands-on and benefits of all the face-to-face -face classes through that. So it was more of the, the elective classes that it, 
didn't really pique my interest. So it wasn't wasn't the worst thing that happened for me, but um, I'm glad that I got uh, what I wanted to get out of it in the beginning. That's good, man. My my friend Morgan, and I'll, I'll be sure to link hers and Keandre's podcast below. She unfortunately in her cohort, I think for most of it, it was like full on and she's super bright. And they like the way that they overcame that initially was they had to stay with pretty much the same person for a long time. So like you were assigned a partner. And so you got mm-hmm. to know that person really well, which is good. Like when you're with a patient long term, you build that rapport and you understand their body. The downside of that is if you're only with one person, you know, bodies are very different. And so she was like, man, it was tough because like I'm with this one person I got really good. But if I got like another body type or another, you know, set of morphology on another person, it would be something very new that I wasn't too used to. So that's good that you were able to get that stuff out of the way. Yeah, definitely. Luckily for me, I had roommates uh, that were also in the program. So. That helps too. Yeah, yeah. So you practice on them all the time, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, bud, can you come out here and film this video for the practical? It's really easy rather than coordinating times to meet up at someone's house and this and that. So just calling up random yeah, friends. Like, They're like at, at, at midnight. It's like, hey, can you mind if I like just feel around your shoulder for like two hours? It's just, listen, I, I need <laughs> help, man. Please, I'll buy you. I'll buy you Chipotle. You know, we'll make this work. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, yeah, man. So- well, yeah, thank you for for letting people know like about your background. Again, I always find that helpful because a lot of people who listen here, they're either students in exercise science or sports medicine round. They're like trying to figure out like what to do is career wise. And, you know, I always remember people most of the time, like, you know, the the new like intro freshman into exercise science, like 90% of them want to be physical therapists. And it's a great aspiration, but it's good to know like what is required to do that because it is it is, you know, a big test. And so hearing, hearing that process from you, I think is going to be good benefit for them. Yeah. I'd say definitely make sure you have the prereqs met. Um, then the website's pretty good about listing. You you may have to dig a little bit, which is a little frustrating, but it has everything there or just go down the checklist. Each program has different requirements too. So just make sure when you're applying, to a certain program that you meet all the requirements because they they will i think apply to one i won't call them out but um, <laughs> i meant i missed like one requirement they still took my money Dang. so, <laughs> so uh, yeah it's a bit of a money game unfortunately man but nice yeah. dude and did you do during your time in undergrad and like applying to PT school, did you ever get involved in any kind of like coaching? Did you ever do like any kind of strength and conditioning work, any kind of personal training or like group fitness route? Um, let's see. Yeah, a little informal though. And I didn't do much of it um, since I was playing on the hockey team. We didn't really have much, much time. Um, but I, I did a little bit of personal training um just friends and yeah small group stuff but nothing nothing major now that's always the best place to start man right friends help you out give them feedback give them mm-hmm. on the on the down low so that's always a good place to start man very very yeah. cool now i kind of want to definitely talk now with with kind of like the last part of this is is going over you know where you work aries cuz it's well known throughout South Florida. I know that y'all got multiple locations. Of course, you're at the Boca Raton location. Um, how did you pick, you know, that as as the place you wanted to work? Like, what about it stood out to you? Yeah. So when I was in PT school, we have four clinical internships. Um, Aries was my second one. Um, I really excelled there. Bill was a great mentor. He's he's the owner, co-owner of Aries and. He's, he's my boss, boss man, but <laughs> he really, he really, um, helped me out a lot in my professional journey. And, um, I feel like the environment, everyone there is comes from that sports background. So it, it fosters that environment. Like we were talking about earlier, the gym yeah, feels like a gym feels like, um, more of the athletic active population, um, the model there we have is great. So all those things combined, patients are great. We get a good population of patients. Everything kind of worked itself out. I excelled there. And then at the end, he said, hit me up when you graduate. And 
you That's have a awesome. job waiting for you. So, so I did that and I didn't second guess. I, as soon as I graduated, we talked and then started working there. That's the power of internships, people. Like if you do well there, man, you may have a job waiting for you afterwards. So there's a testament right yeah. there. Job waiting for him. That's yeah. so dope, man. I, I always love to hear that. Uh, is there a reason behind the name Ares? Ares, I hope I don't put God of God of War. God, what what what's the name? What's I'm not it? quite sure. I'm not good on Greek mythology, but <laughs> it sounds about right. Hey, I, um, I I mess with it all the time. I, I always laugh. People, no offense if you like astrology. I'm gonna I'm gonna clown on you if you talk about it. It's 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 funny, but yeah, what's what's mm -hmm. what's the message behind the name if there is one? Yeah, so I I've gotten a story from Bill. Um, this is all secondhand, but <laughs> essentially, him and his business partners were thinking of the name for the company at the time. They were single. They were going on dates, trying to find that special one, and um, the topic of horoscopes and what's your sign <laughs> always kept coming up so they knew they wanted something that started with a uh good business strategy um True. but they wanted something more refreshing more importantly not the typical hand and spine orthopedic or sports medicine something that stuck out that wasn't just another another place so they thought it was refreshing welcoming and something that would be different okay okay very cool man very cool yeah i i always clown on people when they either. say again happens in scenarios too so oh <laughs> see there you go maybe he's secretly in the horrors goes man <laughs> <laughs> ask him be like hey you know you're, you're kind of acting like a like an aries today man what's going on <laughs> oh man that's, that's funny you, man Ellen. that's funny now you mentioned that you guys do see the kind of like that more active population do you guys have like a athletic specialty or is it kind of that bl still that blend of like you know general population who are i know boca raton's more active population and also mm -hmm. we work with with that athletic population as well youth professional whatever it may be yeah it's, it's a really good blend we have um general population orthopedics primarily and it, it's you'll notice in boca boca is the primary clinic that i've been at but i've been to all the others except for Hollywood. And they're all very similar in the populations that we see. But Boca for the snowbirds, it's more of the the older population, but still active. The runners, the pickleball players, tennis players, golfers, see a ton of golfers. Um they'll be from snowbird season, November through April, um, with some some athletes sprinkled in. And then shift change they go back up north and the high school college athletes are back home from the summer putting in the work training in the off season getting their bodies ready for the season coming up um and then it's more more the younger population we do see a couple professional athletes as well so nice. it's um it's a nice mix i really enjoy the mix and different working with different people so that's dope that's really yeah no, that's cool man that you get like that different exposure like you said you know the snowbirds coming down that that kind of like weekend warrior athletic population that's also has like that gen pop aspect to it but then also getting time to work with some of those high school athletes which i always find high school athletes are fun to work with man they are still pretty malleable and they want to learn they want to grow and you can help be kind of like that coach and mentor too but also help them get their confidence back in the weight room so that's always really cool do you have like a particular area that you feel like you're starting to specialize in? Like, do you find like, Hey, he's the, he's the hockey player guy, or he's the, you know, people who have maybe some ACL issues, like Austin's the guy to go to, like, where do you feel like your specialty is leaning towards? Fortunately, we don't get too many hockey players down here. I would love <laughs> it, but, um, I've gravitated <laughs> towards the baseball side of things, shoulders. I love treating shoulders. I'd say those are something that's, very interesting to me it's always a puzzle piece something complex joint um so baseball players a lot i've i've worked with and golfers are another that's my that's what i do now is i play a lot of golf so i can relate to them a lot and teaching them about their bodies how to get um 
swing mechanics down with what their impairment is and how we overcome that to find a find a swing that fits their game that they can be happy with and um so i'd say those two sports are my that's what i've kind of fell into but i like to be able to be a competent practitioner and anyone who walks through the door so i'm not just specializing in that yeah those are kind of what i do best but um, i like to do good work on everyone so I'm always reading up, finding the latest research evidence and applying that forward to my my practice. I love the mentality, man. Definitely. Everyone's going to have specialties, but being able to at least do a little bit for everyone, I think, you know, is is a good skill set or specialty, quote unquote, in of itself. So that that's dope that you like mm-hmm. to to take on the challenge when it when it comes up. Uh, you talked a little about like the origin story of your, you know, your boss's horoscopes and how much he likes that. And kind of like the types of clients that come in and out. Is there like, if you had to say to someone like, you know, someone comes up to you and they're like, hey man, like what makes Aries unique? And like, or like maybe like it's a philosophy, maybe it's like y'all's like coaching approach. Like how would you kind of summarize like what makes Aries the physical therapy spot to go to compared to X, Y, and Z? Yeah, sure. So a lot, I mean, the the latest PT, <laughs> um trend has gotten better about shying away from those time fillers the the hot packs the ice the stem slapping you on that for 30 minutes and then doing the 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 same three exercises that you've been doing for four weeks six weeks so um areas we're good about creating an individualized treatment approach for you specifically everyone's different they have different needs so being able to tailor that um not being held by handcuffed by insurance with oh they need to see this build and that build so um we can we can do what we need to do to get you better our ultimate goal is getting getting you back doing what you want to do so helping you reach your goals while keeping you strong healthy and preventing future injuries future um conditions from from arising i'd say my personal treatment approach is on the more active side. I'm not really a big fan of the passive movements. They do have their place. They're mm-hmm. good, uh, need be, but I don't like to overutilize them. And, and um, I like to get people moving, lifting um, more high intense uh, movements, lifts, exercise, keeping the body strong healthy and all the above so yes sir i i really like that approach because and again like you said there is a time and place for those passive for those banded clamshells like there there is definitely a time and place context dependent the individual that you see day one week one you might need that but my Mm -hmm. like my beef with and this is even true for like personal training certifications when i read them or i teach some of their content it's like you know phase one training you're doing you know you know, supine external rotation of the shoulder for three weeks. And it's like, what are we doing? Like we're, our job is to get people to move, you know, obviously nuance is a side of like the complexity of their biomechanics and their injury history. Them doing that maybe for a day or two, or maybe a short week. Sure. But my job and ultimately like you were mentioning to get people healthy and active is they need to move. They need to be challenged in a way that is appropriate for them with their limitations, with their abilities, but I need my client to move and doing things that are so regress. Of course, it might feel easy. It might feel good in the moment, but is that really serving them long-term? And so I really like that you take that approach of like, Hey, we're going to get you moving, man. Like we're going to get you active. We're going to get you back to what you want to do. Things are going to be intense at times. We're going to bring that up because that's what ultimately is going to best serve you to get to do the things you love long-term. Yeah. Progressions and regressions are a big part of part of my approach as well. So being able to identify when someone, maybe that's a little, not, not yet, we can regress this and then Mm -hmm. slowly build back up to where we want to get to um, and keep on progressing as much as we can. Um, Knowing, learning, teaching them how the body is supposed to move, how, 
how to do a certain thing, building that foundation so that when we get to those more advanced stages, they're they're humming, they're they're knocking it out of the park and progressing faster. That's another thing about areas that I like is we because we don't use those modalities um, of the height, ice and heat, which is what they can do at home. We can spend more time with them working on those more meat and potatoes type of things and getting them better, which leads to getting better quicker and better outcomes from what I've seen. Yes, sir. Um, so, and I think that having that more active base approach, that more, you know, getting them to move approach, I think that, and I mean, there's, there's certain research that shows like people's like perspectives on their self-efficacy and how they feel from those approaches, it makes people more resilient. And at the end of the day, like we talked about those mental barriers where it's like, uh, I got my shoulder, like I got my rotator cuff repaired. The MRI is clean now. I did physical therapy, but I'm still like concerned that I'm going to hurt it. And so I'm going to guard it or I'm going to move awkwardly or I'm going to be hesitant to do overhead pressing, even though it's been six, 12 months ago. Um, Having that approach shows people it's like you are not broken. You're resilient. It's like it's almost like I tell people it's like exposure therapy in a lot of ways. It's like, hey, pushing you just a little bit outside your comfort zone in a in a safe and constructive way to where it's going to challenge you physically and mentally to grow past that barrier that you once had. And so that way, when you go to pick up your grandkid or an athlete, you're going to do that really deep pass on the football field for a go route you're not going to even have to think about the injury you had in the past. You're going to be prepared because you've done it. You've done it in the gym with your coach or your PT, and you don't have any fear that you're going to have to deal with repercussions again from some nocebo or some, some, you know, kinesophobia that you may have developed from maybe not challenging your body and mind enough. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that all starts with education. I I find myself, I'm I'm doing a lot of educations because, I went to school for this. So I, I, I have that luxury of the knowledge research. A lot of people, it's foreign to them. So someone who may not understand certain things is bringing awareness to the, the myths and all the things that are read online and yep. things like that. Um, I, I can be that facilitator to them and kind of expose them to, um, not having that fear in the back of their mind that spinal flexion loaded spinal flexion is gonna pop a disc or herniate their disc so um, someone said it yes let's freaking go man thank you thank you uh short tangent let's do it people who might get annoyed at me for saying this because i say it sometimes who cares pt approved thank you austin Mm -hmm. you can flex your spine you can flex your spine with load. Guess what the spine does? Flex, extends, laterally bends, and rotates. When you tie your shoe, next time you tie your shoe and you're at the bottom of tying your shoe, pause for a second. Are you perfectly in a hinge position with neutral spine? Also, side note, neutral spine, eh, interesting term because your spine has natural curvature to it. And anytime you flex your hips, you go into some degree of spinal flexion. New slash. When you tie your shoe, look at yourself in the mirror. Your, fl- your spine is going to be flexed. Now, obviously, that's a different context of doing a 600-pound deadlift, but just like any lift, are you adapted to doing the lift in that range of motion in that context? You would never tell someone not to tie their shoes with a rounded back because the spine can flex. But if they've never deadlifted before, and then they get you know adventurous and they slap 135 on the bar and they deadlift with a flex spine, that might be something different. But the spine mm. can flex, and it does flex under load whether you want it to or not. And so I love that you have that educational piece of like removing that fear, removing that nocebo from people and giving them the confidence to obviously teach, you know, proper mechanics and form, but like, you're not going to die because you have minor spinal flexion in certain contexts. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nailed it. Um, And like you said, there's extremes to it too. So of course, like I wouldn't go and load up that bar and do some Jefferson curls or good mornings with that bar, but, um, yeah, you want to progressively load it, expose it to positions that you normally achieve throughout your daily activities, sport, all that. Mm -hmm. So meant to move. 
Absolutely. Yeah. I'll highlight sometimes in videos, like I'll take like snapshots of athletes moving well, high level athletes that are healthy, that are at the top of their sport and their body's contorted. It's in weird angles. And even if it's body weight, sometimes it's, it's through applying force through tackles or, you know, putting a shoulder down into someone and like the human body puts itself in unique positions. And sometimes you don't get to dictate that either. Like in hockey, you know, you, you do what you can on the defensive end to control what someone's doing, but you don't always get to tell yourself, I'm going to be in quote unquote, perfect, perfect spinal alignment during this tackle or during this check. It's like, hopefully you've built up the resilience of your body to be okay from making that action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you for coming to my TED talk, Austin. I appreciate that. And thank you everyone. Cause I will keep talking about that until the research changes because that's what it happens to say right now. And so PTs tend to agree in, in that context. So Austin, I really appreciate you, man, for, for coming on. Thank you again for your time. I know my man just got engaged here, came back from a cruise. And so he's catching up on life. And so thank you again for, for all that you do and uh, for, you know, working with me where, you know, my clients can now, or people I know can come to you and, and get their body and mind right. And so that way they can go back to doing the things that they love. Uh, is there anything you want to plug at this time? Social media services, anything, let the people know where to find you. Yeah. First of all, I appreciate the uh, kind words. Um, and I'm at, so I'm at Boca, um, the Boca clinic, which is off federal highway. Um, but we have clinics in Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, and Weston. Everyone's competent within our practice. So just because I'm here talking to you guys, uh, it doesn't mean that you can't go elsewhere. But um, so we, we also have for the runners out there, we have a run club um, hosted by Lululemon on, I'll have to get Damien the, the, the address to that. I don't know it off the top of my head, but um, the third Thursday of each month, um, if you enjoy running, it's just a, a nice space for the runners to get together and talk and hang out and go for, I think, three to five mile run and then um, some refreshments afterwards. But um, we do um, run clinics. Bill's doing a squat form lecture um, this upcoming weekend. So um, we do do different things as well in the community. Nice. I might have to show up to one of those Lulu runs. I, I love Lulu, man. I, I I can't lie. I get that trainer discount makes it semi affordable, and uh, they make they make good they make good quality stuff. And I like running, so I might have to actually hit you up on that. So I'll be sure to put all those links in the descriptions below. Remember, like Austin said, it's not just Boca Raton; they have different locations, and I'll be sure to put those website links so that way y'all can find anywhere in the South Florida area to help serve you and your needs. As always, y'all know where to find me. Right, we're on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Daily content. For, for posting, as well as we have the podcast coming out every Monday or every other Monday, excuse me. And then YouTube videos coming out on the Mondays we missed. So y'all got a nice video. That's a deep dive format every single Monday. Again, make sure y'all are subscribed to that newsletter. Uh, when this comes out on July 3rd, the July newsletter will be out. Uh, it's free. It's no charge. And if you don't want to be subscribed anymore, you can simply unsubscribe with the click of a button. So you're not held hostage, uh, as well. Coaching services, um, Still got maybe a spot or two left for the morning that those have filled up. I've gotten a couple new clients. So if you want to work in the morning with me at Johnny O's gymnasium, message me on Instagram, go into the DMS or just click any of those take action buttons on the shift method.org. And as always, we got merch that y'all can get t-shirts, water bottles, you name it. We got it. Uh, so you can head to the shift method.org to check any and all of that out. Austin, thank you so much again. Appreciate your time, man. And hope you have a wonderful day. All right. Yeah, thanks. You too. See you soon. Awesome. Later, everyone.